please scan the QR code for your attendance. Welcome back to my e-lecture series for analytical chemistry course. In this video, we will learn on basic skills in chemical laboratory. The most important thing to work in chemical laboratory is safety. Remember that safety is everyone's responsibility. Some general things you need to ensure are Familiarize yourself with all the laboratory facilities available Wear your goggles at all times Contact lenses should not be worn in the laboratory Rubber glove must be used when transferring concentrated acids Never eat or drink in the laboratory Volatile solvents and fuming concentrated acids must be placed and handled in a fume cupboard You must wear a gas mask when handling reagents in the form of powders Any chemical spills have to be cleaned immediately Know how to use the fire extinguisher or the emergency fire blanket Lastly, all bottles and containers should have complete labels. Disposal of chemical substance Basic disposal includes pour the waste in the sink and dilute with pipe water. Keep the waste for proper disposal at approved disposal site. Treat the waste to reduce its hazard and then pour it in the sink and dilute with water or keep it for proper disposal at approved disposal site or recycle the waste. Here are some example of disposal method of chemical waste. If you have acid waste, you need to mix the acid waste with a base to neutralize and pour the mixture into the sink. Disposal methods depends on the type of chemical waste. Laboratory logbook. It is used to record all activities performed and observations made during the experiments. The content of the notebook must be legible by others. You have to use full sentences to avoid ambiguity. Should clearly explain what has been done and observed to enable other people to repeat your experiments. A hard copy of your important computer-generated data, such as spectra or chromatograms, should be placed on the page of your notebook. Analytical balance There are two types of balance available in analytical chemistry lab. Analytical balance and top-loading balance. Analytical balance can accurately weigh reagent up to four decimal places, while top-loading balance can read to two decimal places. Because analytical balance is quite sensitive, here are the principles of using it. First, place a suitable receiving container on the pan of the balance. Ensure that the container is not too heavy that will exceed the maximum capacity of the balance. Use tear button if necessary. Add the chemical substance into the container appropriately and read the new reading. Do not place any chemicals on the balance pan to avoid corrosions on the balance and to ensure cleanliness. For hygroscopic substances that can easily absorb moisture from the air, wagging by difference method is convenient to use to get the weight of substances. First, weigh a cap wagging bottle that contains the dry reagent. Quickly transfer the reagent into another container and immediately recap the wagging bottle and weigh it. Use a dry, clean piece of paper or tissue paper to lift or hold wagging bottle or container because fingerprints can change the weight registered. The sample has to be at ambient temperature to avoid errors caused by the air convection flow. 
temple removed from a hot oven take about 20 to 30 minutes to cool down to room temperature. It is advisable to place the sample in a desiccator while cooling to avoid the absorption of moisture. All windows of the electronic balance must be closed while wagging to avoid the effect of air movement from the vicinity. Highly sensitive electronic balance should be placed on a sturdy and secure bench such as concrete table to reduce vibrations. A factory calibrated electronic balance may show slightly different mass as the gravitational force at the factory may not be exactly the same as that in your laboratory. Buoyancy If an object is placed on the balance pan, it will displace a volume of air equivalent to volume of the object. When this happens, the apparent weight of the object will be less than its original weight. The difference in weight is equal to the weight of the air displaced by the object. The force that causes the decrease in the measured weight is known as buoyancy. A correction has to be made if the density of the object is not the same as the density of the standard weight. The actual weight, M, is the mass of the object weight in vacuum can be calculated from the following equation. This is an example of calculating buoyancy effect. In waking of benzene, with density of 0.878 gram per milliliter, the measured weight is 10 gram. Calculate the actual weight of the sample and the error if the measurement doesn't consider the buoyancy effect using the stainless steel weight with a density of 7.8 gram per mil. To solve the problem, insert the value given into the buoyancy equation as shown here and calculate the error percentage and you will get 0.12%. Volume measurement. Volumetric apparatus are labeled by the manufacturer as to the temperature and how the apparatus was calibrated. Apparatus marked with TD meaning to deliver are for delivering a volume at the indicated calibration temperature. Apparatus marked with TC meaning to contain and or those that have frosted ring at the upper part are assigned to contain a volume at the indicated temperature. Effect of temperature on volume measurement Not only the volume of the liquid but also the volume of the apparatus can expand with the increase in temperature. At ambient room temperature, an aqueous solution expands at a rate of 0.025% per degree Celsius. A change of 1 degree Celsius will change the volume by 0.025%. All volumetric measurements are based on a specific standard temperature and the usual temperature used is 20 degrees Celsius. The volume at 20 degrees Celsius can be calculated from the following equation. Let's look at the example of temperature effect on volume measurement. A sample with 40 ml volume is taken from a refrigerator at 5 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume of the sample at 20 degrees Celsius. To solve the problem, insert the value into the equation and you can see the expand of the volume at higher temperature. Next apparatus is Burette. Burette is the most common apparatus available in analytical chemistry laboratory. Get to know the tips of using Burette to avoid errors. First, rinse the Burette a few times with the titan used. Degas the burette before using it. Allow slow flow and when approaching the end point, let the titan out slowly, less than a drop. Avoid parallax errors. Read the bottom of the meniscus. Estimate reading to 1 over 10 of that the smallest scale on the burette. Consider the thickness of the scale lines when reading the burette. 
Sometimes, air bubble can remain at the bottom of the valve. The bubble can give an error if it comes out during the titration. Get the bubble removed before the titration. Usually, it can easily be removed by flowing the titrant for 1 to 2 seconds with the valve fully open to allow the fast flow to sweep out the bubble. Another familiar apparatus is volumetric flask. The principle of using it are, first, introduce the reagent into the volumetric flask. Add enough solvent, which is less than the stated volume, and swirl the mixture to dissolve the reagent. Add more solvent to fill almost the mug and mix the mixture. Add the final volume carefully using a dropper, not a wash bottle. While adding the solvent, wash the meniscus and stop when the bottom of the meniscus is aligned with the front and the back of the mug. Tighten the cap and turn the flask upside down several times to ensure complete mixing. Pipet. There are four types of pipettes, namely transfer pipet, measuring pipet, oswat falling pipet, and serological pipet. Technique of using pipet are begin by rinsing your pipet with the solution that you want to use and discard the rinse. Use a pipet filler to suck the liquid into the pipet. Slowly place the tip on the bottom of the flask. This will help to maintain a slow flow. Wipe any drop on the outer wall of the tip using a clean towel or tissue paper. Touch the tip to the inside wall of a beaker and let the liquid flow until the meniscus is perfectly aligned with the calibrated mark. Transfer the pipette to the receiving flask and let out the liquid freely by gravity feed while touching the tip of the pipette to the wall of the receiving flask to avoid splashing. After the flow has stopped, place the tip to the inside wall of the receiving flask for a few seconds to allow complete drain. The pipette should be positioned almost vertical at the end of the liquid transfer. After using the pipette, it should be rinsed using distilled water or immerse it in a cleaning solution until you are ready to clean it. Currently, most of the chemical laboratory is using micro pipettes for small amount of chemicals. Technique of using micro pipette are Insert the tip snugly into the barrel Set the volume required using the micro pipette knob Push the plunger to a stop that corresponds with the volume Hold the micro pipette vertically and dip the tip 3-5 to mm into the reagent solution and slowly release the plunger to suck the liquid. While lifting the tip from the liquid container, slide the tip against the wall of the container. To dispense the liquid, touch the tip end to the wall of the receiving flask and push the plunger to the set stop. Wait for a few seconds to let the liquid flow down the tip wall and push the plunger to the end to remove all liquid. Used tips can be discarded or washed properly for reuse. Last apparatus is used for filtration. There are two types of apparatus which are Sintered filter crucible where you will need to set up the apparatus and connect it to vacuum pump. Another type is using filter funnel and filter paper. Be aware of how you transfer the chemical from beaker into the filter funnel to avoid any spillage. That's all for chapter 2. Video on handling the selected apparatus is given separately. Make sure you go through all of them. Bye-bye.